Hey, it's Dan, welcome back. I've got a good one for you today because this is I allegedly and commercial real estate is about to explode. It's going to have such a huge problem and uh, we have an insider that stepped forward and gave me a bunch of information that is absolutely amazing, okay? So uh, please, first of all, we have an email going out. It's gonna be a big one because it's got uh, uh, financial information, how to prepare and things like that. Join the email list. The easiest way to join the email list is, you know, use your phone and take a picture of this right here and you can join the email list or use the link below, guys. Sign up, make sure you can do that uh, right away. Like, subscribe, and uh, comment in the video as well. Today we have a sponsor, uh, Private Internet Access. First things first, I have an insider that steps forward that's in the commercial banking industry and I am not allowed to say anything about this person. I can't use their name and they don't even want me to say if it's a man or a woman but what they told me was absolutely staggering and they said i want you to look at these two banks first dan and then this report that was issued and the first bank is flagstar bank now the problem with flagstar bank and its commercial real estate think about what i'm telling you they have loans that are due that are past due huge problem they've brought new staff in to collect on these loans because they are past due. The, they have a problem where they uh, have $51 billion in loans. Okay, we throw numbers out now where we don't even think about this anymore. The only problem with that, think about this, they have $51 billion in loans and the bank is only worth $9.3 billion. So they've got 553% um, more loans than what the bank is worth. 553% more than what the bank is worth. Now, guys, I literally pulled over to make this video and I'm like, oh my God, I gotta get this thing out there right away. So there's that. Now, that's bad. There are 67 banks that are in huge trouble right now. And we've glanced on that. People are like, oh, it's so boring hearing about banking. Guys, this is going to collapse on a Friday night and it's gonna be like, it's no big deal, but it is a big deal, it's huge, because what's happening right now is they're propping these things up with matchsticks and with playing cards. The next one is Zion Bank Corp. And uh, here's another stellar one, where Zion has commercial real estate loans of $26 billion right now. The $26 billion, again, hey man, that's half of uh, Flagstar, it's no big deal. It's, it's you know, no big deal. It's a huge deal because the bank is only worth $5.8 billion. That's it, guys, that's it. So they've got 440% more loans than what the bank is worth. Now, the problem with this is the banks are coming, they're calling these loans in, they're hiring staff to foreclose. Then they're reaching out to my buddy who I can talk to and he's like, wow, Dan, there's just so many different banks. Banks I've never heard of are reaching out to us now. So there's that. You're going to see hotels go out of business this summer. You're going to see uh, uh, people that own small businesses are going to have their landlords foreclosed on like you've never seen before. It's just gonna start happening because enough is enough is enough. They let these people go on forever thinking that there was gonna be some magical rate drop and now they cannot afford this. The interest rates have gone up so much and doubled and tripled that these people cannot, they cannot refinance these places. They are at, you know, good ones, good uh, buildings right now, 30 and 40% occupancy, 40%. That would be bankruptcyville in any other lifetime. But now, oh wow, we've got 40%. We could probably unload this property. That is insane, guys. It's absolutely crazy. Then, occupancy is one thing the other thing is we have occupancy they're just not paying their rent so you've got businesses that are out there in these buildings that are not paying their rent right now think about that think about how bad that is and the banks have got a tenant in there that they cannot collect on and uh you know and, and these people aren't paying their rent so big big fat squirrel right there he's living large so one thing that was pointed out to me by this person, Dan, take a look at this report because this report is amazing. Florida Atlantic University, huh, never heard of it. They did a report 
on data analysis on more banks at risk of going down because of commercial real estate. This is absolutely amazing. Now this report is below and you can read it and you should read it because this will terrify you. This will make you realize, wow, they've really lied to us. This is really much worse than we thought. It, it is nowhere near a problem that can be solved. If you are sniffing glue, thinking that, uh, hey, they're gonna drop interest rates a quarter of a point, a half a point, 1%, it wouldn't make a difference. You're going to see people that are going to go out of business like you've never seen before. You're going to see commercial uh, real estate companies go out of business. The banks are in huge trouble because they have, they have more loans outstanding than the total assets of the company. Think about that, okay? How much money do you have in your checking account? Got $5,000. Okay, I've got $100,000 in bills right now. Well, let's just cash it out and let's, you know, pay everything off. Well, you have five grand, Dan, and you owe us $100,000. It, it, the math doesn't work on all this stuff. Now, all these people, oh my God. You know, the average bank right now has 300% more debt than they have in equity. Think about that. Think about if you owned your house that way. My house, I owe, you know, it's worth 100,000 and I owe 300,000 on it. You would be out of business. You would be done. You would be foreclosed upon. You would lose that property, you know, hands down. It would just happen. Goodbye, let's take it. Bye, Dan, time to get out. A couple things about this. You know, they did it an exposure test. I mean, this is, thing is fascinating. It's so good and you have to read it. So, you know, the serious development of our banking system and the commercial real estate, Rebel Cole, a, a PhD of economics said, this is, you know, with commercial property selling at a serious discount and not being able to, um, uh, to get adequate uh, attend, you know, uh, tenants, it's going to be, a, uh, they're going to have to come down and sell these properties at a reduced price. And it's going to take a huge toll in these banks. Now, we have to have a banking relationship. You have to have online banking to pay your bills. You have to have that, but I'm telling you, this is it. This is where you have to have money out of the bank. If you are on a fixed income, have at least 10% of what you would make in a month so you could have that in your uh, life. You need to have a, an emergency fund anyways, because when all of a sudden something happens and, and uh, you know, the internet goes down or there's a hacking or something like that. The CDK thing with the automobiles should have taught these auto industry people that they should have had a backup. I oh, know. And think about this. When that gets turned back on, I read a report today that I won't, you know, won't bore you guys with. They say, they say it may take five years to fix the damage that was done from that one cyber attack because the infrastructure of some of these places are completely destroyed right now and some individual dealerships may have to be built from the ground up to get their loan and their sales systems up. But this report, I mean, it's a, amazing. The U.S. bank exposure uh, to real estate is, is just, I mean, this thing is amazing. 157 largest banks, you know, that have more than $10 billion in assets, there is not one of them out there that's doing good. There's not one bank in this batch of the 67 that are doing well. So get ready because you can walk into a credit union, you can walk into a bank, you can say, what is the majority of your type of loans that you do? Now, Bank of America, you're gonna talk to some tool in the loan department, who's gonna tell you how great they're doing and that everything's great. But a credit union, they're a little more trusting. Oh, we do a lot of auto loans, Dan. This is our, our forte is auto loans. Then you look at places like BMO, it used to be Bank of Montreal. BMO, they're into independent trucking. They love trucks. So those guys, man oh man right now, they're out there trying to, uh, you know, get through that industry. It's done, guys. Look at FedEx, look at UPS, look at the United, you know, uh, the postal system is down. There is less shipping now than there has been in an incredibly long time. But the commercial real estate, read this report. It is stellar. It is absolutely stellar. And the fact that this person told me to go and look at this, because the thing that they told me, and as I read it, I'm like, wow, their company's mentioned a couple times in here. And 
I appreciate this. If you guys ever have inside information and you don't want anything said about you, let me know, guys. I'm not going to tell it. You're not going to, you know, give your name or anything. But this person didn't want to say male or female or anything or which department. Don't say, you know, that I'm in the South. Don't say that I, you know, I'm, I'm you know, anywhere. It was really specific. But with that, I appreciate this. And you guys should appreciate this, too, because the exposure and what these people have is unbelievable. And this report is stellar. Take a look at it today. And uh, let me know what you think about this because it's going to collapse before our eyes, guys. We're going to have a problem. There's no two ways about this. So get yourself ready. And what's going to happen, guys, miraculously on a Friday night, they're going to start shutting banks down and you're not going to have access to it. But I don't believe these internet outages. I don't believe these things are not coincidental. I believe none of that stuff. So let me know what you think about this. And uh, just a quick video today because I'm really furious over this. But if you want to be stupid, if you want to buy a house right now, don't buy it through a realtor right now. Contact banks directly. Because what's going to happen is they don't, the majority of them, don't have a system and a way to sell you the banks. But they're going to get this. You know, Dan, I really love that you tell people to do this because... What's going to happen is one thing I've been tasked for is to set up a program where we can sell properties and start listing our REO properties, our real estate owned properties, because in addition to the commercial space, we're going to have a tremendous amount of residential space that's going to be uh, residential units that are going to be unloaded right now. Now, here is the thing. They're going to give people one last chance, pay up or else. They're not going to refinance these people. Not a chance. If somebody has not made their payments for two years or longer in some cases, they're not going to do that. My buddy Doug, who does the personal foreclosures, is doing half a dozen foreclosures today. Hey Dan, gonna go, it's just getting busier, slowly but surely, but the dam is about to break. Remember that. So let me know what you think about this and uh, take a look at it. But again, Credit unions are safer than banks in general. They're all in a precarious spot right now. But I have people that have written me that have three and four different financial institutions in their lives right now, rightfully so. What would you do? What would you do if you could not get money for 10 days? Look at the CDK hack that's going on, what, it's ninth day now? Okay, and these people can't sell uh, cars right now. And as tight as the car industry was, as bad as it was, how do you think they're doing right now? They're doing horribly, folks. Come on, get real, get real. Let me know what you think about this so far. Let's talk about our sponsor, Private Internet Access VPN. A VPN is a virtual private network. And what it does, it makes it so that whenever you go from your device, cell phone, computer, laptop, tablet, to any website, you have a tunnel of encryption that makes it so the bad guys cannot see you, the government cannot see you, the hackers cannot get access to your keystrokes. All of my IT people that are setting up my social media company are all working with PIA. Oh, it's the best one, Dan. That's a great company. You, you had them before they were a sponsor. They're fantastic. The nerds love this place. You can save 83% off. There is no hardware to install. You press one button and the device is turned on. It is that simple. And the deal that I worked out in addition to the 83% was every device in your household, your laptop, your tablets, everything, everybody in the household gets covered under one plan. It's incredibly inexpensive. It's pennies a day, but check it out. You don't want anybody to know what you're going through. My privacy, I value more than anything you guys know. And one thing I do is I don't want people to know my search history. I don't want them to go through anything on my computer, on my devices. And what protects that is private internet access. You don't want people to be able to see your banking information or anything like that. Check it out today. Use the link below and save 83%. It's absolutely the deal of the year. Check it out number one rated plus they've also been the i allegedly part of the year for two years in a row use the link below and save 83 percent today now one thing i like to do is get away we've talked about this skipping out in the middle of the day 
find some place to to be by yourself and you know I've got the half season pass so I like going to a daytime ball game and skipping out from everybody and uh, it's a great place I've got good seats we donate the seats if you guys have a charity or anybody in Southern California that can benefit from this I've done this a bunch we've donated the seats I've had subscribers have their grandkids come to town and they wanted the seats and we've donated them for that but uh, the seats are stellar reach out let me know and uh, you know let's go watch a game they're playing the Oakland A's and my friend is a huge Oakland A's fan and I just you know you know I blame that on bad parenting but you know he's here and he got the seats and I just held one of them for myself so let's go check it out Now those are seats, guys. Check that out. Now this is fascinating because the story comes from the New York Post. Uh, Jill and Joe Biden refinanced their house. I'm not kidding. I'm not making this uh, uh, 20 times. And they pulled out a total of $4.2 million from their house. Refi, 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 refi. Wow. Okay. Uh, the house was really $350,000 and now it's just miraculous. It's worth a lot more money. So isn't that fascinating? So check that story out below. The uh, next thing is the FBI has issued warnings for people that own timeshares. They don't want you to fall for scams right now where people say, hey, listen, we, hey, Dan, you own a timeshare? We can get you out of your timeshare. Contact us today and we'll take care of it. And then what they do is tell these people that they got out of the timeshare and then they go out and list to the timeshare and say, hey, do you want to stay in this place? for free they find out the dates and do it and then you owe more money you owe your maintenance fees you're locked out of your account horrible stuff horrible stuff the irs has issued an apology and the apology is to billionaire ken griffin who used to who runs citadel and used to live in chicago and now moved to florida and the apology starts with him and hundreds of other people there was a guy that worked there a contractor who wouldn't it be cool to pull rich people's uh you know tax returns and see what they're making and what they what they say they make wow this guy did this and ken griffin found out about it. he was on that list so they issued an apology to him and other people but read that story below and then the final story and this is what's wild this one this one comes from the uk which is not that's not that i get stories from the uk all the time but this is a story that should be reported here over the uk and that is Somebody that owns 48 Subway stores just had a wrongful death lawsuit for an employee that wanted to transfer and ended up dying in, their, in one of the locations, and the family sued and they lost the lawsuit. Well, now they're closing 48 locations. But again, because of the precarious nature of a Subway franchise, um, you know, these people are not making any money and they are losing these stores, you know, at a record pace. But how many people work in 48 subway stores that's the worst part of this whole thing that i just that's what just makes me stay up at night guys with this stuff it really does because people you know don't look at the workers it's sad it really is so you know share your thoughts on this stuff it's getting crazy that we get new financial news on a daily basis and sometimes we have to get it from other countries because we're not getting this stuff here isn't that don't you guys find that interesting? Because I do. And I love everybody from Canada, everybody from around the world, Stephen in the UK that sends me stuff on a regular basis. All the doctors, Don, I mean, Charles, Doug, everybody, you guys are fantastic. But this is amazing, okay? So don't forget to join the email list. Once again, see this? Put your cell phone up to that. Freeze the, the image and take a picture of that. And it'll take you right to the sign up page if you're not on the email list. I get people to write me and go, hey, add me to the email list. We don't have time to do that, to be honest with you. It's not to be snooty or anything like that. But I'm the guy out working seven days a week right now. So please let me know what you think about this. Get yourself ready for the banking problem. Because what's going to happen is they're going to act like it's a big shock. And oh my gosh, can you believe this just happened? It is going to be catastrophic. And you're going to see businesses go out of business right now. Remember that. So 
Let me know what you think about all this. Like, subscribe, comment, share it with your friends and enemies. And uh, I will see you guys very soon. Thanks for being here.